Hello boys and girls, welcome to the preview of Wolves against Arsenal this Wednesday night. Only four games left, absolutely huge this game. And it's even more important after that bullshit performance against Crystal Palace at the weekend. But you know what? We've been given another lifeline. Now third place is not in our hands anymore and if we do want to finish above Spurs, we need someone to take some points off them in their remaining four games. But when I was looking at the fixtures before the Chelsea game, um, against Burnley, if we would have won our remaining games and Chelsea would have won their remaining games, we'd have been level on points at the end of the season and it would have gone down to goal difference. Now at the moment, we do have a better goal difference, but not by many. And the one thing I didn't want was to lose out by goal difference. You know, the odd goal here or there, you'll think of penalty misses and things like that. And um, yeah, Chelsea went and blew it. They went and dropped two points at home to Burnley. So it means top four is now automatically back in our hands. We win our last four games. We finish in the top four. Simple as that. It doesn't matter what Manchester United do, what Chelsea do. Just worry about ourselves. Get four wins out of four. And we are back in the Champions League. But of course... That is easier said than done. Now, I said in my preview before the Crystal Palace game, home comforts, a place that we like playing. Well, that turned out right, didn't it? What a load of shite. And I'll tell you something, if we perform anything like that, Wolves will do us damage. They are a dangerous side. They're currently 10th in the Premier League, but they're only one point off 7th place. Now, that's important because it's a place in Europe and given it's their first year back in the Premier League, that would be an unbelievable season. Now, Wolves seem to be very much Jekyll and Hyde. Against other sides outside the top six and lower down in the table, they lose to them and they seem to struggle sometimes. I look at their game at the weekend and it was a very drab uh, draw against Brighton. But I guarantee they don't play that poorly against us. You think of games at Molyneux this season, they drew with Manchester City. They did lose to Liverpool in the league at Molyneux, but they also beat them at Molyneux in the FA Cup. They beat them Manchester United twice at Molyneux this season. Um, they lost to Spurs at Molyneux, but they beat them at Wembley. Um, so they beaten Chelsea at Molyneux. So they've beaten everybody in the top six this season, bar Arsenal. But when they came to the Emirates... They gave us an almighty scare. And on the balance of play, they probably should have won that game. It finished a draw and we were kind of lucky to get out of there. Um, and I'll tell you who was the hero of the day then was Bern Leno. How many times have I said that over recent weeks? I think that was a sign of things to come. So listen, we can't take this game for granted. We can't go into it playing the way that we did the other day. Unai Emery has to have learned his lesson from the Crystal Palace game. Strong lineup. I don't want all this rotating. Strong lineup. Strong lineup against Leicester. Strong lineup against Valencia. We need to go for it. Luckily for us, we've got two avenues to get back into the Champions League. So do Chelsea, actually. But you look at Manchester United. They're relying on teams like us to drop points in these games to try and get themselves back into the Champions League because they have no other avenue. But with that said as well, Manchester United's next two games are Manchester City on the same evening that we play Wolves and then at the weekend they play Chelsea. Now either one of them or both of them are going to drop points. So this is huge. We could secure Champions League football within the next week. It really is that simple. Um, in terms of the players, like I said, I think there's going to be changes and I'll get into the lineup in a moment. But Unai Emery has to get it right. Tactics have to be spot on. Wolves have got some seriously dangerous players. And in their manager, they've got a really, really good one. Um, and like I said, he seems to know how to get the best out of his players against the top six sides. It's like it's a extra motivation and the players kind of lift themselves. What I'm hoping for is that Wolves have still got a bit of a hangover from the FA Cup semi-final. You remember they were 2-0 up against Watford. 10 minutes to go. Watford pull it back. Troy Deeney gets an equaliser in injury time. And then they go and win the game in extra time. And I'm hoping that their disappointment of that afternoon 
has left them flat for the rest of the season. If they were a little bit lower down in the table, you know, away from that seventh place and safe from relegation, I could kind of say, you know what, they're already on the beach. But it's not going to be one of those games. They're going to need the points. Um, Watford also play before them um, on Tuesday night. And um, they could be like four points clear. So they're going to have to keep, you know, right on their tails if they want to try and get there. But just worry about ourselves. Let's go out there and put a performance in. The players owe it to the fans. The manager owes it to the fans. They all do. Um, and what will be will be. And we will see. We've... Um, Slipped up twice already when we've been given opportunities against Everton and then Crystal Palace. Let's not make it a third time. Let's go and secure that place because I want to get back in the Champions League big time. It's not about whether we can win it or not or how far we can go. It's about getting in it. You know, it attracts the best players. That helps with a summer transfer window. The money that comes into the club is better as well. The football will be on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights. You're not having all your weekend games pushed to a Sunday every single time. The knock-on effect is huge. So we need to get Champions League football. Simple as that. So with that said, I'm going to go and get into the starting lineup. Starting off in goal, Bern Leno. Very, very straightforward decision. Don't need to say no more. Our number one goalkeeper. Now we're going to move into the defence. And I feel that Emery is going to stick with a back three. But in no uncertain terms... Does Mustafi get anywhere near the starting lineup? I don't even want to see him on the coach. I don't want him even handing water out to the players. I want him left at home, a million miles away from that first team lineup. So starting off, we're going to go with the captain, Lauren Koscielny. Um, he's been brilliant over recent weeks, but then he looks a bit ropey when Mustafi's next to him. But Listen, no problems whatsoever, and that's what I'm going to go with. Um, alongside him, I'm going to bring back Socrates. Finished his two-game suspension, and I am so happy he's back. Oh, thank the Lord. Please don't get sent off. Please don't get injured. Just please play the rest of the season. Same goes for Koscielny as well. So I'm going to have Socrates in there. Um, alongside him, to make up that back three, I'm going to go with Nacho Monreal. Should have had a nice little break after not being involved in the game against Crystal Palace. Got to watch out for the width because that's where Wolves are dangerous. Very dangerous. Be interesting to see if Traore ends up playing in this game because of his pace because that is absolutely frightening. But I haven't seen a lot of him within the Wolves side over recent weeks. But um, that said, they're still going to cause problems. And we've got to watch that ball over the top and in them channels because Nacho seems to be the one that they pinpoint. Um, if we can get that right, we'll be fine. Um, in the wing-back positions, on the right-hand side, we're going to go with Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Should have started the game against Crystal Palace. Don't think that same mistake will happen again. Cole Jenkinson will get nowhere near the team. So pretty straightforward, and that's Ainsley Maitland-Niles. In the left wing-back position, we're going to go with Kalazinak. And um, he needs to do what he's been doing over recent weeks. Get down them channels and cause the problems he's causing. But his final delivery, he needs to sort it out. He gets in so many good positions. And you're thinking, this is it. This is the moment. I said it um, in my player ratings video that when he was in the Bundesliga, he was getting in these same positions, but he was always picking someone out. Lately for us, he seems to not be getting past the first man. Or when he does, the crosses are missing everyone. Sort that out and he'll be absolutely fine. I'm going to go into the midfield area. First of all, Lucas Torreira, same as Ainsley Maitland-Niles, should have started the game against Crystal Palace. No doubt whatsoever he will start this game and that mistake will not be happening again. There will not be a Gwendozi and El Nenny pivot again, hopefully in my lifetime ever at Arsenal Football Club. Um, I hear that he's nursing a bit of an injury, but it really doesn't look like it's that serious, so he'll be absolutely fine. Uh, alongside him, going to bring back Granit Xhaka and um, you see just how important this guy is to the team. Seriously, it's not because I've had a picture with him that I love the guy. It's quite simply because I know how important he is and I've been saying it for so long. Now people are starting to realise it. So he's had a bit of a hip injury. Um, I saw a video of him outside the Emirates the other day actually and a fan was asking him why he wasn't playing and not in the squad and he said, you know, you need to ask someone else that. Didn't look too happy that he wasn't involved. Um, and I like that. Someone that wants to play. Not going to let little knocks keep him out. Um, but he'll be ready for this game. He's back in full training. So they're our best midfield too. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, in the area in front of them. First of all, I'm going to go with Alex Awobi. 
I feel his performances from the bench kind of deserve um, a starting chance, really. He's done really well when he came on against Crystal Palace, causing problems. But again, it's the end product. He's got to create. He's got to do things. Um, should have scored against Crystal Palace right at the end. And that's the side of his game he's got to work on. But for this, I'm going to put him in there. Uh, alongside him, I'm going to go with Meza Ozil. Of course, Aaron Ramsey's injured and not available. So um, I'm going to go with Meza. And I think that you know his performance against Palace warrants to be starting, even if it is away from home and there are them you know, doubts that he can only do it at home. If he puts in that kind of performance again, um, puts the ball in the back of the net or supplies something for one of the strikers and whatnot, then absolutely no problems whatsoever. Um, up front, as the main striker, I'm going to go with Alexandra Lacazette. Now, of course, you see that I've left out Aubameyang. Now, I've looked at some training pictures and there's quite a lot of them going over the last couple of days and Aubameyang seems to be the one that's missing. I don't know whether he's picked up a knock. I know he took a whack in the game against Crystal Palace, but I've not heard anything and I'm not too sure. Um, but also what I'd like to do for this is leave him on the bench and bring him on if needs be. I want a little bit of ammunition now. I want to just change things up a little bit, um, given the fact that we do have Leicester on Sunday as well. And you've got to remember, he's chasing the golden boot. He's level um, in first place for the golden boot with Mo Salah. Um, and Sergio Aguero so um, it's important you know probably for him but it's a team game and we're going to have to just rotate a tiny tiny little bit and I'm going to leave him on the bench and I'm going to have Lacazette and there's no doubt about this to be quite honest with you he's our main man up front as that focal point um, and he seems to score in big games and this is a big game and we're going to need him to get on the score sheet so no drama absolutely no problems Alexandre Lacazette so there we go. That is it. That is the preview. That is the predicted lineup. Like I said, Unai Emery has to get this one right. The players have to stand up and be counted. They have to put the performance in. So let me know as usual in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. Um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. Um, there'll be a match day vlog um, after the game um, as usual. And of course, there will be the player ratings the following day. And then we will see where we are. If we win this game then I think we're one foot in the Champions League. If we then go on to win the game at Leicester, then I do feel we're definitely in the Champions League. But we lose this game, I've got a feeling we're going to have to rely on winning the Europa League to get back in there. But what will be, will be, as I always say. Um, so yeah, listen, until the uh, match day vlog, I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.